Hi, Stefan, the BMW DIY guy. My project today is repair. It is the rear air suspension on an E53 X5. This is a very common wear and tear item on this generation and several other models of BMW that have the air leveling suspension systems. That air, that piston in the back or in the front in some cases, is has a rubber casing around it, and that rubber flexes over time and can crack and get holes. So. The symptoms of this that you'll see is sometimes you'll see one side that might sag a little bit low, you know, maybe you're, maybe both sides, and in this case I've got uh, the driver's side that's sagging a little bit low in the rear. You also might see the air leveling suspension inactive message as well on your car. Now, that can be symptomatic of several things, not just a hole in one of these air suspension units, but it is an indication that you definitely have some problems. In this case, I definitely have a hole on the driver's side rear, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace both rears at the same time. So, let's get out to the garage, get started. Okay, so before we get started here really seriously, I just kinda of wanna show you what we're looking at. So, I'm looking here at the rear. Now, I fired the car up to move it a second ago, so the air suspension is about level on both sides right now. My primary problem is that it's low on the driver's side in the rear but you can you can check this really simply i mean you feel like your car's not sitting right you can just take and just like stick a couple of fingers between the tire and your wheel well to measure distance right so i've laid both my back seats down we're going to pull this back board out we're going to pull both side paneling out on this side and on this side and we're going to pull both rear tires off now what i'm not going to cover in this case is i'm not going to go through jacking it up what, what I am going to do is I'm going to jack it up on both sides. I'm going to put in jack stands. I want to emphasize again how important it is to use jack stands. You're going to need two for this because we're going to take both rear tires off. Now, the recommendation is always with these air, the, this air suspension is to replace both. Don't just replace one. Seems if you're going to go through all the time and trouble and effort to do this, you might as well do both. Now, on this side, I'm about even as you can see right now, and that's because the air suspension filled as I moved the car to center it in my garage. But uh, normally this side is really, really low and there's almost no wheel gap there at all. So it's definitely leaking out this side and I believe it's leaking on the other side as well. So you can see I'm well prepped. So the first thing you want to do is take your, uh, uh, take your tool for taking the lugs off and loosen them when the tires are on the ground. This way you can get good traction on those lugs to loosen them. So loosen all the lugs on your rear tires and then jack it up. So I'm gonna use my jack under the jack point here in the rear, get it up, put in a jack stand, and do the same on the other side and then take both tires off. And then we'll walk through taking the back plate out, those two back side covers on either side so we can get to the air suspension. And all in all, this probably sounds complicated, but it's really not that hard. So let's get started. I'm gonna jack the car up after I loosen the wheels and take the wheels off, and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, so here we are on the driver's side. Both wheels are off, car's up in the air. Uh, as you can see, I've got my jack stand set on both sides. So here's the troublemaker right here. So when you're looking at your air suspension, this is it right here. Now we're gonna see it in a compressed state with the new one. It's in, a, in an extended state right now because of the axle being down. You know, this your, your wheel being down. So it's so one of the reasons why I'm using both jack stands because I wanna be able to use my jack to lift this back up to help compress this back up so I can get to the clips and everything else. But what we need to do is start on the inside first and be it to be able to get to the top of the air suspension, pull the cover off, release the air pressure, any lingering air, air pressure, because it was definitely under pressure when, since I started the car to move it. So, but that's our guy right there. We're gonna replace it on both sides. The process is essentially the same on both sides. So let's move to the inside and show you what we're doing next. So we're looking at the driver's side rear. So I've obviously, I've removed this bottom plate, that covering, I've pulled the door off this side. But what we're gonna need to do is we're also going to need to remove this piece as well, because we need to remove this piece. The air suspension top is right underneath this piece, so we need to be able to get to it. So we're gonna have to take this off and take this off most likely to get through it. So I'm gonna pull those pieces, I'm gonna pull them on both sides. So here's the other side, I've removed the door. We're gonna look at removing that cover there as well. And that side piece. Now, if I can get away with not doing it, then so much the better, you know, minimize the amount of effort, but chances are. So as you can see, there's small little expanding rivets here. We're gonna use a plastic trim tool to pull those rivets up, and then we're gonna pull these side pieces. Okay, so we're looking at, again, the driver's side. So I've pulled both black plastic pieces here and here. Uh, on this one here, there are three kind of nylon 10 millimeter nuts 
that you screw off and then this piece will come out, which is also pinning down part of this upper piece. This upper piece has a 10 millimeter nut and then a couple of little screw in pressure clips up here and a pressure clip right here. Once you take those out, now I'm pleased to say that I don't think you have to take these side panels off. I had to, to take this piece and kind of wiggle it up and to get it out. And I've done the same for the other side as well. As you can see, that's off. Same thing, a couple of, couple of uh, 10 millimeter nuts. This center piece, or this black piece comes off, this tray piece, and then this tray piece can come off. So as we look at this, you can now see the top of the air suspension right there. You can see the air pressure tank right there. You can see the top. The one thing I want to point out, since we're going to take this rubber gasket and put lift it up and off, note where the arrow is. Feel there's a little directional arrow on this gasket on how it fits into this space. So I've seen that arrow in a couple of different orientations. I'm going to make sure to put mine back in the exact orientation that I took it out on both sides. And the orientation is not the same. That may mean it doesn't matter, but I'm just going to make sure to make sure that it's straight. So um, a couple of things we're going to do, we need to do. We need to release a little bit of pressure to make sure that we don't, that the air suspension is not pressurized. As you can see, that small red fitting right there, we're gonna, on, on the expansion tank, we're going to loosen that fitting with a wrench and let the air bleed off. We're gonna do the same as I move slowly to the other side as well. And you can see the fitting right there. So in this case, on this side, it's blue. So I'm gonna loosen those fittings to bleed air off. I'm gonna lift up the, those rubber grommets and I'll show you what's underneath and what we're doing next. So I pulled the grommet up. You can see the two little clips that are gonna be holding the top of the air suspension on. You can see where the air fitting comes down with the little plastic clips right here that we're going to compress to get it off. And you can see the fitting right here. I've loosened this fitting. This is a 10 millimeter wrench. And I've loosened this a little bit. Uh, if you have like a, a box wrench, it might be a little bit better, but it's 10 millimeter regardless. So I've loosened the other side as well. You might be able to hear a little bit of hissing air. I'm gonna give this time to bleed. I don't want any extra pressure in these tanks. Uh, to release any pressure out through the air suspension so when we take those off. So uh, we're almost there as far as getting one of these units out because really the only thing that holds these air suspension uh, pistons essentially is what they are in is two clips at the top and a big clip at the bottom. Granted, the uh, air fitting here helps hold it in as well, but it's just a couple of clips on the top and bottom and, and it comes right off. So I'm going to give this time for the air to bleed off. And then we're going to pull these clips. We're going to pull this the, the, the top connection here. The other thing that we're going to do, like, it, like I mentioned, and let me lean back out here really slowly, is I'm going to put my jack underneath to lift this up to help compress this back into place and make it easier for me not only to get the clip off because it's not being held down under pressure and under tension, also from the top and the bottom. So I'll show that. I'm going to give some time to give the air to bleed off. Air's all bled out. I'll probably give it about five or ten minutes. Not a big deal. So I want to make sure that I didn't have any pressure in the system and make this any harder than it should be. Now you'll see that there's there's a little black clip here on the inside with two little arms on it. What I've done is I've got my needle nose pliers and I'm going to press in on this and gently compress this clip. Now I'm trying to do this left-handed so forgive me if it looks a little awkward. So press this clip and the hose comes right up and off just like that. So now that's off. I'm going to back both of these clips off. Now the other thing I've done in the interim, and let me move here slowly, is I've taken my jack back out and I've put it underneath the, the uh, wheel here and I've compressed, as you can see, and I'll look in really nice and close, I've compressed the air suspension where before it was a full extension, so now it's compressed. This will allow, allow me to get it out of here with less pressure. The other thing I, let, me, let me do here is I'm going to move really slowly and do my best to show you. We move slowly. I'm, I'm going to try to do this real time so you can see the orientation of it. But you should see at the bottom right there. So you can see there's just one big clip that goes around the bottom post of the air suspension right there. So we're going to pull that clip. That'll come off. We pull the two top clips. We lower this wheel and we just pick it straight out and we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna pull those clips, I'm gonna do that next, and we'll show inserting the new one. So I pulled both clips from the top, and they're little pressure clips where you have to lift that little tab and then slide them off the post. This bottom one is just a simple horseshoe kind of style clip. 
I pulled off the bottom one. I've lowered this, and this is filthy as you can imagine. You'll probably see me using gloves here in a little bit. But here it is, and it's out. This thing has been in, no doubt, since uh, it was manufactured and is an original. So this air suspension has about 155,000 miles on it. So it's all done. I'm gonna pull the one from the other side because I'm gonna do them both at the same time. So I'm gonna go pull the other one and then uh, I'll walk through putting the new one in, but it's just gonna be the reverse. We're gonna put the new one in, we'll put the bottom clip on first. We'll use the jack to lift it back up into place and align it correctly because there's those little posts that come through and they come through in a very specific pattern. And then putting the clips back on, reattaching the hoses and you're good to go. And you will have saved yourself a lot of time and effort in doing this yourself. Okay, here we are back on the driver's side. I've got my new uh, air strut here. Notice it's marked left. So the driver's side is left, passenger side is right. And you can see there's these little posts that key it into the right position as well. I've got this new unit. Now, it appears that my driver's side was probably OEM. So it looks like a regional. So amazingly enough, it had 55,000 or 155,000 miles on it. The other side appeared to, to have been replaced already once because I recognize a different manufacturer name on it, but it's good to replace them both at the same time. I both know that they're going to be in good shape and, and honestly, they're not that expensive. So replacing both just makes sense if I'm going to go through this effort. So I'm going to, as you can see that the, the wheel is lowered again, I'm going to put this bottom one into place. I'm going to pin that bottom clip in, so I'm going to load it into place, and then I'm going to slowly raise it up to alignment of the, of the upper pins. Now, I could also do it the other way around, where I could do the top first and then bring the bottom up. So I'm going to try it bottom to top first, and if I find that it's, it's not the easiest way to do it, uh, I'll show you the, the other way, but I'm going to try this way first. Um, I fit the top in first. So, Either if you have really long arms, you can you can reach around into the wheel well and lift it up into place and while looking and putting the, the top clip on, I actually grabbed an extra set of hands to uh, help hold this up into place and turn it to get the right orientation to get the clips in on top. As you can see, it's not secured at the bottom yet. Uh, so what I've done is I've put my jack back into place. Here's underneath the wheel and I'm going to slowly jack it up into place. I've already done the, the passenger side and just line this up so it goes correctly into the hole and just compress it up so it's in a good solid place and then get underneath and put that little horseshoe clip back onto the bottom of this. So it's secure at the top. I've done the passenger side already. As we look in here, you can see it's secured here at the top. I left the little cap on for now to protect it to make sure I didn't get anything in or any dust or dirt while I was doing this. And so it's secure from the top. I'll put the hose back on. I'll do all that and I'll show you all that when I'm, once I'm done here. But I wanted to show you this process of how you lift it back into place with your jack. You just slowly jack it back into place, get line this up through the bottom and then put that new clip on and then we'll secure it from the top. So I'll show you that next. Okay, so here we are looking at the driver's side again. Now this fitting is super simple. It will just snap right back into place. You put it over the top and press down and you'll see, you should see the plastic fitting and those plastic clips clip around. Now on my driver's side, or excuse, on my passenger side, there it is. There was a little faint click there. It's gonna say my passenger side clicked in much more rapidly. It's in nice and solid. This one I had to press a little bit harder, but I got a little bit of a click out of it. So you can see this is all done. So it's secured from below. It's secured from above. It's lined up properly. This hose is back on. We're gonna fit this grommet back on. Now the other thing that I wanted to make sure to mention was don't forget that you've loosened this little brass pressure fitting right here. So turn it back, tighten it back up. And I've got my 10, 10 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to tighten this back up nice and snug to make sure that it doesn't leak. And I'll check it as well here in a little bit, but all in all, I just wanna make sure it's nice and nice and set again. So it's in good shape, that fitting is in straight so it won't vent air anymore because that would be a bummer to do all this work and then forget these and then uh, wonder why your system is leaking, right? So. Just make sure that you have this all set in and done. You look at the back of my hand there, sorry. Okay, so this is tight. All of our clips are in. I'm gonna put my rubber grommet back in. And you know, chances are orientation of this, cause like I said, there's a little arrow on it. Chances are orientation probably doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna put back in the orientation, orientation that it came out and that'll be set. So next steps after this are going to be 
replacing the plastics. Now, what I'm probably going to do first though, is I'm gonna put the tires back on and lower the car. Because that way I can check for leaks, I can make sure everything's okay, and then I can put all the interior plastics back together and put the car back together and she'll be done. So, all in all, you can see this is a pretty simple project. Wheels are back on, so quick reminder, I'm not going to walk through in detail jacking your car up, taking your wheels off, but just a couple of quick reminders while we're here. So when you put your lugs back on, always put them back on in a star pattern. One, then across, then across, then across, then across, then across. To make sure don't, don't just go in a circle. And uh, you put them on snug until the tires are on the ground and then you can apply the proper torque. Now, the other thing I wanted to show here really quickly is this ironically is how low it was <laughs> before I fixed it. Now, that makes sense because the pressure, the system is not pressurized yet and it's this low on both sides because neither of the air suspension shocks are, are inflated in any way. The expansion tanks are empty, all of that. So um, I just wanted to show this and always make sure to uh, torque your lugs um, to, the, to the correct pressure for your car and your wheels. I just wanted to remind that. And like I said, everything is put back together as far as the system is concerned on the inside. Now I'm gonna fire the car up, let the system pressurize, check all of my connections to make sure there's no leaks. And assuming there are, are no leaks, I can put it all back together and we're done. I'll do a one qu last quick walkthrough after my check and we're about done. All right, so I'll deal with a little bit of motor running noise, but as you can see, she lifted right back to the place where she should be and it's equal on both sides. The air code of air suspension and active that I was getting on the on the gauge cluster has now gone away. Uh, I've checked all of my fittings to make sure that I don't have any leaks here on the inside. So I checked my fittings. Um, I don't have any leaks at all, which is fantastic. I don't have any leaks here as well. So that's all sealed up properly. So now the only thing I have left to do is just replace the plastics. And it's gonna be the same process that, that you did before. You fit this initial piece in, you have to fit it over that post that you kind of worked it up and over, fit it back in, Put the little pressure clips back in here and here, back there, the nut, the couple of nuts for the back piece, same thing for the other side. Put your base plate back in and you're good to go and you're all done. Congratulations on uh, doing something that really isn't that hard. A few basic tools and a jack and some jack stands and you can save yourself a bunch of shop time. Back inside after a test drive, car rides perfectly, levels itself out, no issues at all. Both sides in the, in the rear are leveling themselves out perfectly. There's no hiss, no leaks, no problems like that. Now, initially I thought my air leveling suspension inactive message was gone, but actually it, it hasn't gone at all. Now, there's a couple of things you can do about this. Now first and most, the most common way that people try to get that air to go away is to pull your battery. So pull the negative post off your battery. It's in the trunk underneath your spare tire in an X5. I pulled it for about 15 minutes, plugged it back in, took the car for a drive. I still have the message. Now, it's a bit of a bummer uh, as it takes a pretty advanced tool to plug in. I also have a Bluetooth OBD tool that I plugged in, but it's unable to reset this particular error. So most commonly you can take it to an independent shop or take it to your dealership and they can reset the system. Now I've done a fair amount of research on this there might be something else still wrong with the car, but I doubt it as it levels out perfectly, it inflates perfectly. In this case, I think it's just a factory reset, essentially, that takes a tool that most people don't have. Now, if you have access to those tools or have a friend that does, then they can do it for you and that'd be great and save you even that much more money. But I'm just gonna combine this in, a, in an upcoming oil change on the car. I'm just gonna take it in and have them reset that system as well to tell it, yes, it really is fine. It's not leaking anymore and shouldn't be a big deal. So. All in all, this, this project has saved me quite a bit of money and labor time to, to replace those air struts myself, bought the parts myself and put them in. As you can see, it wasn't hard and really takes basic tools. The only disappointment, of course, is that that last reset I can't do myself, but that's okay because I've saved quite a bit of money throughout this project. And so I'll just combine it with my next oil change at my local independent dealer. So all in all, you can see this is a pretty simple project, really not that hard. Um, it takes basic tools. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them if I can. If you liked what you've seen, please click subscribe. I really appreciate it. It makes a huge difference for my channel, and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.